Mute. Good morning again. <laughs> Muted. Anyway, let's continue. What did our lesson planner say, Jennifer and Kaylin? What's our three topics today? They're on top of it. Roman numerals, kilograms to pounds conversion, centimeters to inches. I will try to finish three. I told you we'll. Yesterday was only two topics, so that the freshmen can adjust uh, nicely and accordingly, not too fast. Okay, common, common, not really complaining, but common feedback is I go fast. Okay, not because I wanted to, it's just how I am. And we don't have the luxury of time for math. We only have one hour of math um, each day, but that's going to be changing next year. Okay, there are days where I'll be doing four hours of math. <laughs> I look so excited about the four hours of that. No, actually not. Because I advocate breaks. You know that, right? I want you to take breaks. Like not long, like what my son does. He over breaks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, he sets the timer now. He's more responsible in that setting breaks for himself. So no, I'm not excited about four straight hours. Okay, so we're gonna have breaks in between if um, that's the day that's a four hour now. Okay, but that's just a minor change. It's just that I don't know how if we have students who struggle in math. That's not going to be fun. One hour is already hell for them, right? <laughs> <laughs> so far, all of you, or if not, if not all of you, most of you, like math. Tell me. Okay. So, let's start off with Roman numerals. It's only freshmen that I gave a packet um, on Roman numerals. Why? Because you guys already have this. For one day today, the campus is closing at 12 30 today. We're all gone today. So no one's doing labs. 
Roman numerals. Why do we need to know the conversion of what's our numbers? What are the numbers that we use? What do we call them? Arabic. Arabic, correct. So, so why do we need to know Roman numerals to Arabic, Arabic to Roman numerals conversion? Why? <laughs> what? Controlled substances. Oh, yeah. They're written in Roman numerals. C1, C2. C3, C4, and C5. Correct. Am I finding your recording? Yes, I <laughs> C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. Yes, correct. Okay, that's one use. What else? I didn't wear my watch with Roman numerals today. I forgot. Okay. Um, Because there was something wrong with that watch, remember? Do you remember that? I have a watch that has Roman numerals on it, but I told you there's something wrong with it. Okay. Um, what else is the use of Roman numerals in the practice of pharmacy or medicine? You do it every day with Miss J. Where do you find Roman numerals? On a watch, a clock. Okay. What else in our practice, pharmacy, medicine? It became second nature to you now because you've been doing it all the time. Where else can you find Roman numerals? Your bottle medicine. What? <clears throat> bottle medicine. Um, medicine bottles, if they're controlled, what else? Where? Every day. On your sticks, or in other words, your prescription. <laughs> right? Many, many prescribers still use Roman numerals when they're denoting number of tablets, number of capsules, um, the amount that's the total quantity that needs to be dispensed. This is why we still teach you this. Old. Roman numerals is old. However, there are still doctors, prescribers in practice who still write in Roman numerals when we're talking numbers. Okay. So let's put the most commonly used Roman numerals in medicine and in pharmacy. There's more than what you've learned, just so you know. Okay. But we're going to focus on the ones we always use in pharmacy or medicine. First one would be your I, which is equivalent to one. One and then B can write it like this or like this, which is equivalent to five. five. And then X, you can write it like this or like this, which is equivalent to ten. ten. And then with that, what's next? L. L, which is equivalent to fifty. I remember there was a previous instructor who said at that time that was more than ten years ago. You have to remember L. Like Las Vegas. Las Vegas is 50 years old. Las Vegas is that. Right? Yeah. Well, I guess this time I can say L, Miss L is not turning 50 next year, but in the next five years. <laughs> in the next five years. So I'm on my road to 50 now. So remember, Miss L is on her road to 50. Okay. Now, what's next? C. C is equivalent to 100. And then? D is 500. 500, and then M is 1,000. Okay. Yes, those are the most commonly used <clears throat> Roman numeral in the practice of medicine and pharmacy. There's also one more, which is lowercase s as equivalent to a half. half. Those are the most common ones. Let me give you tips on how you'll remember some of them. Okay. C, I remember it by thinking century. Why? How many years are in a century? 100. Okay. M, I remember it by thinking millennium. Years in a millennium? Thousand. Okay. There are rules that we follow in Roman numerals. First rule some of these may be repeated a maximum of three times. Which ones are these? I, I can be repeated three, up to up to three times, meaning you can do I, 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 right? But you may also see them as I. Let's do that first. You may also see them as I, or if it's two, I, I, if it's three, I, 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 right? So in the old days, I was talking about this, and then they got a prescription while I was gone, and there was a substitute teacher. And they said, Miss L, we got our prescription wrong because there's three T's. 
okay? So now I'm telling you, yes, you may do this, that means one tablet, and then this, two tablets, and then this, three tablets. So if you see that, those are kind of Roman numerals that's compressed, okay? So now I mention it because it was mentioned to me before. I was just talking about rules in the old days. So I can be repeated up to a maximum of three times. What's next? What else can be repeated a maximum of three times? X, correct. Okay. So it can be X, 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 X. Makes it right. Okay. So this is equivalent to? 30. 30. And this is equivalent to? 30. Okay. Did you do this in career prep? No? Okay. So good to know. Because if you did it in career prep, I know that you can be faster. But if not, I'll slow it down a bit. So that's why I said, I'm hoping for three topics, but if it's just, that's fine, okay? And then what else can be repeated or may be repeated up to a maximum of three times? Letter C, letter C can be C, which is 100, C, C will be 200, and then C, C, C will be 300, no more than that, okay? What else can be, maybe, repeated three times? Or M, maybe, it can be repeated three times. <laughs> so M would be a thousand, M, M would be two thousand, M, M, M would be three thousand. Okay. Comma to C, say for example, in a prescription, dispense total quantity to the dispense. When you see this as the total quantity to the dispense, you're going to dispense 30, 30 tabs for 30 caps. Right? Okay. That is the 100 tabs. Are 30 caps. Okay. But there are rules, and I'm going to tell you. That as we move on, like do not use this anymore. TJT doesn't want you to use this. ISMP doesn't want you to use this. When I say do not use, I mean take note of that. Why they come up on the board exam? Okay, they follow these rules, and you're, you'll say that's tricky. Those are two both and two correct answers. Not really. There's a best answer in there, which is following the rules. Okay, of writing this abbreviation. Okay, now. What's the next rule? You may subtract some of them, right? Okay. So one rule would be if it, say for example, LV, correct? Okay. This will follow, this is 50, right? And this is five. Since the number prior is larger, right? you just add the two. So this will be five. Clear? Now let's go VI. This is a five. This is a one. The value of the Roman numeral prior is larger, and then the next one is smaller. So what do you do? You just add. This becomes six. What if it becomes IV? This one is a one, and this one is a five. The value of the Roman numeral prior is less. What happens? This carries a negative sign, and this is a positive sign. So this will be four. Subtract base four. Now, talking about this part, what Roman numerals are used to subtract? There's I, right? Can you do minus V? Can you do minus 10? Yes. How do we write tiny? 100 is C, so how do we write 90? The 10, and then the 100, this carries minus, and this carries minus. You follow? So now you have I and X <coughs> may be used to subtract. What else may be used to subtract? Seems very good. So if I want to write 900, how would I write it? CM, because M is 1,000, 100 is C. Take that, and this is Those are the letters, the only Roman numerals that you can use to subtract. You cannot use V to subtract. Like if you want to write 500, just like D. I'm going to do DM. <laughs> no, right? You follow? Okay. I had a student who's like me. I have a hard time remembering two options, like a girl or a boy. Left or right? Tell me, Miss Algo, left. 
going to ask you less than an hour. Did you say left or right? Mm -hmm. Roxy tells me I have a daughter. Less than an hour. Said, Did you say daughter or son? Because <laughs> there's only two options. That is my struggle. Okay. But ask me to remember a series of digits. No problem. Each one has a challenge. Each one has a struggle. And that's mine. Okay. So there's one student in the old uh, in the past that I had. He said, Miss L, uh, I really am having a hard time remembering I B and D I. Okay. Which one is six? Which one is four? Okay. So I told him. The story about my Chinese boss, I had a Chinese boss, and of course he's into numerology for the freshmen. I know my stories get repeated, so you can tell them the story. <laughs> okay, so I had a Chinese boss back in the pharmaceutical industry. He owns a building. The building is a four-story building, okay? So he inherited that business from his uncle, and he, he doesn't like, the biggest office is in the fourth floor. Okay. And I said, when he hired me as a consultant, he said, you take the, the office in the fourth floor. I said, why? That's the biggest office. Why don't you take that? No, I'm not taking that fourth floor building. And like a statue of his uncle is right there. At, like when you get out of the elevator. And I said, what? You know? And he said, you know, that number four is the number of deaths for the Chinese. I said, oh, no. I said, good to know that number four is the number of death. My uncle's dead now, you know. <laughs> I said, oh, come on, right? I really don't care, but my dad actually cared about numerology. So, but it was me. I said, okay, I'll take the bigger office <laughs> then. So he stayed on the second floor and he chose that office. So that's when I found out that number four is the number of death for the Chinese. Actually, 13 is a lucky number for the Chinese. We had it wrong, right? Like we don't want 13th floor in a building. It's actually the lucky number, and that's my say. So it's my favorite number. One of my favorite numbers. So 13. No, not true for the Chinese. It's not. But going back, number four is the number of death for the Chinese. And I told the student, how do you remember? Well, you may kill somebody with your IV if you don't do the math right. Right? So IV is four. Four is the number of death. And that four will come up again in your law class. The A form, 41 means destruction. Request to destroy expired controlled substances. So you'll remember number four again, because I'll tell you. This is how you remember this form, okay? So four versus six, okay? Any more rules that we've missed? Those are the general, like, easy rules so far um, when it comes to Roman numerals, okay? Now, my fellow Americans, what year is the Declaration of Independence? <laughs> Gonna return you to your elementary history class. <laughs> huh? I heard it right. You just have to be, uh, you, you just have to say it with conviction. Oops. Give me a history. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that too, but we can't. I'll set it up. <laughs> what about you, Daniel? When was the situation? You know what I joke about? Give me back your green card. Say that one. <laughs> okay, when's the declaration of independence? When was it? Come on. Come on. Okay, 1776. 1776. Let's convert this to Roman numerals. 1000 would be? Mm -hmm. M. 700 would be? B. B. C. C. There's your 700. This is how you do it, okay? And then 70 would be? L. X. X. And then? The I. The check. This is a thousand. This is five hundred. This is one hundred. This is one hundred. This is fifty. This is ten. This is ten. This is five. This is one. This is your one thousand. This is your seven hundred. This is your seventy-six. Correct. 
Yeah. Yeah. Where do you see this? Where do you see this? Who's holding it? I told you this before. To know some words. The Statue of Liberty. And I had a student who was a smart A. He said, oh my gosh, Miss L, we, st we, st we still have to go to New York to see this, right? No, go to uh, the intersection of Trump and Las Vegas <laughs> Boulevard and look up. It's right there. Yeah. So she's holding it. And I was like, when I was a passenger, I looked up, I was like, years ago. Damn! <laughs> like, I calculated 1,776. And one in a million chances of happening, by the way. So, like, I really enjoyed that. I was able to count the uh, calculate Roman numerals. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Any questions on Roman numerals before I give you your in class work? Roman oh, numerals, okay. Let's get rolling. In class work. So, Caitlin already did it, and Jennifer already did it. They're one day ahead of you. <laughs> and some of you did it, here. Good job. So, everybody did it. I can skip that part and you can just answer it now. How many did it? Printed it out and did it. Uh, I didn't print it out. Okay. So I'll give you one minute. So okay. yeah, 10 minutes. The rest of you didn't do it. It's not a homework, so it's okay. You still have to do it here. But if you want to get ahead, it's also fine. But because many of you did it, I'm going to give you your homework. Yeah. And so you can work on your homework and not have to be late. Again, work on in-class first before you jump to homework. If you did the in-class, you printed it out, and it's proactive, then you can work on it. Okay, okay. Remember this one? When you see this, don't get surprised. You've been working on the prescriptions already, right? One tab, two tabs, three tabs. <laughs> Homework. Pass them around, please. I have enough now. I have one for I was like, I'm trying to figure out. Don't worry. It's the same exact all the heart. I don't see you next. <laughs> Hopefully, we can do three. If not, it's okay. I want to do um, the height and the weight conversion back to back. Three more days, school days, till break. It'll be Monday and Tuesday. Campus is open, the two weeks we're gone, but I'm saying I am out. So do come. <laughs> Yeah, me too. We offer more tours. Take this time to rest, recharge. We'll see you fresh and rejuvenated. Oh, please. Oh, Ms. Jen, I both had a dream that Christmas was yes. One year ago, we saw the contract in it today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, during the lunch. Right. And I'm so conscientious right away. I texted positive. Misty, I texted positive <laughs> right away. My family at home was like, if you wear a mask today, don't hug anyone. Oh, that's good. Because <laughs> it's a big party. <laughs> you also don't work on it at home. Oh, yeah. I only work here. It's from that one really. But I mean, all of us. Everyone was back a year ago. The class, the whole class decided to keep wearing masks. We still have my bag in my car and the floor. I don't know why it's like a nature for you to wear it here, but like when I run to the store, everything is wearing them in the <clears throat> You probably have it on your routine. And we work for the team, you know, we work for the team. Work. Mm -hmm. You have one already in the class. Yeah. My auntie came and we watched um, the concert. She's still wearing the KN95. I wear a KN95. Yeah. 
stranger. Yeah. She said, I just moved anywhere. It's curious. I said, oh, could we just a suggestion now? And from the Philippines. When I was there, I had to wear it. I had to wear it in Ubers. And it's humid and hot, so I was dying all the time. So I would always do that. And then I was, oh, you did. There's a Din Tai Fong here, right? Okay. Um, there's a Din Tai Fong in the Philippines. So I went there, I had a meeting in there. And you know what? They looked for my back scar before we were seated. Yeah. And I said, oh, shoot. And I remember. I scan them and I put them on my phone. You don't have to have that card itself. Yeah. Before they seated us, they both they checked our uh, back score. <laughs> oh yeah. Everywhere, even the restaurants. But that was the only restaurant we went to where we got carded. I call it carded. We got carded. <laughs> Others were fine. Oh, yeah. Others were fine. Yeah. I think it's random. Shalom Bao. They always have a, like a spicy version of something. Yeah. They see that. But you know what's popular for them is the Shalom Bao, which is the. <laughs> That's where I went for my birthday in Taipong again. And I went to so many restaurants. I mean, day before work. Went to Buddy V's. Too overwhelming, Anya. Yeah. Lucky likes the hot It's too overwhelming. Too much meat. I like meat, but it's overwhelming. What they order? They had so much last night. So they had um, Alfredo, the chicken Alfredo. That's what I ate. They're Alfredo. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> the creamy is so creamy, right? They had that. And then, of course, the breadsticks, the salad. But they did have meatballs and sausages. Um, I think it came with a spaghetti. That's I don't know. Oh, speaking of paying for person, <laughs> they want to join in the bodies. And I said, I know it's January 12th, and the meeting time is at Bally's already, nine o'clock or 10. <laughs> so 9.45. Yeah, they wanted to join us last night. I said, okay, I'll just send the email once Blackboard shell is set up for this tea. Yeah. Wait, the whole January. January. Okay. They like it when we combine the two. Like they like it when we went to the board hearing together. Yeah. Ready? Let's go. Don't forget your S F this are lowercase. Okay, S F it means pass. So Sometimes you will see SS half a tablet, right? SS. Or this is usually mixed with grains. So G R S S. Other way around. So that means half a grain. You follow? Let's do this. Number one is 10. Number two is 60. Number three, Jordan. Number four, Kyle. Number five, Daniel. No. There's another letter in there. So X is 10. And then I X. Okay. So 10, 19. Correct answer is 19. We've got one to five correct. Hands up. Good job. Number six, Stefan. Uh, nine is I X. Correct. Seven, Clyde. XX. XX. Eight. Leslie. Oh. L. Nine. Rocks. LX. LX. Ten. Gina. XX. Uh, Correct. Who got six to ten? Correct. Hands up. Let me see hands. So I know who's um, 
Who's getting behind? 11, Sarai? Correct. 12, Jennifer? Correct. 13, Micah? 14, you again? Yes, because I did it on the board. <laughs> 15, you again? 16, correct. Um, 16, uh, before I move on, 11 to 15, I've got those correct hands up. Okay, 16, Kaylin. Correct, 17, you again. She's gonna be gone. She's leaving us to go to Hawaii. So mm -hmm. I'm calling her again. Correct, 16 and 17, 18, Camille. Correct, 19, Leslie. <laughs> 20, everyone. Yes. Correct. Who got all correct? Hands up. Good job. Moving on. No questions? I am moving on. If there, yes, all right. Um, so for um, 48, could you still write it as I I, um, I mean, I I L? Number what? I'm sorry. Number 40, number 17. 48. 17, 48. Okay. Can you do X? And then, not X, I'm sorry. Can you do I I L? No, no, you only deduct the Roman numeral prior it. So a 40 would be XL. You don't jump like that. Okay. You get it? Yeah, no, no, I get it. Yeah. But then I, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's always a shorter conversion, less Roman numerals. Okay. Good question, though. Next one, next topic. So I like to finish both topics because one is height, the other one is weight. Or I'm talking about measurement of weight from household to metric. Okay, we'll start off with that. These two variables, height and weight, are variable. Variable. My Asian coming out. Variable. The R's not coming out right. The variable. <laughs> Okay, so these two variables are necessary for for what? In the calculation of what? So these are height and weight. Dosing. Dosing. Correct. Dosing, correct. But really, really, body surface. That's why I told you check your calculators. If you do have square root functionality on your calculators, if not, buy them during the break. Your calculator should have, during this time, because we're going to use it, the square root functionality. Going back, the formula for body surface area includes both height and weight of the patient. We'll get there week three. Okay? This is why I'm covering the height conversion and the weight conversion from household to matching. Okay? Here in the U.S., what we use is household. That's why it's called household. Okay? So we use we use when we when we weigh ourselves. Pounds. Pounds, correct. The abbreviation is LBS. It came from the word libra or libras. That's why LBS. Okay, pounds. But everywhere else, when you talk to your friends, Australian friends, Asian friends, they tell you their weight in kilograms, and you're gonna be no way. That's your weight because in your head. That's pounds the person is saying, but in their head, they're used to kilograms. Canada, yeah, kilograms. So when they get here or move here, they have to calculate them. <laughs> yeah, even in grocery stores, we're used to buying our produce, our fruits, or meat in kilograms. Okay, a dollar per kilogram. Here it's per pound. You have to adjust. Okay, so pounds is LBF. Kilograms is what? Kg. This is your household. What we know, that's how you remember. And this is your metric, part of your metric system. But we're going to get deeper in metric as we move on. Okay? So pounds, what's the conversion? Anyone? Kilogram is 2.2 pounds, correct. Do not forget this. A kilogram is 2.2 pounds. Do not forget this. Take okay. note too. If you receive paper tests, 
sometimes the font looks like a number one, okay? So if there's a long number and you're in a hurry and then you look at this number as number one, remember the symbol for pound is LBS, not BS, okay? So do not do this. You know why I'm telling you this? There was one student who did it in his test. He was like, no, Ms. L, there's a one here. I said, don't BS me. It's not a unit of measure. He calculated the extra one, okay? Take note, this conversion is important. Remember I told you when I convert, once student didn't count under six ways, I do conversions because I was trying to make, make it click to everybody. Until I realized, you know what? Through the years, I streamlined it to two. Creation, proportion, and dimensional analysis. And one rule I'd like you to do, which I also um, talked about to other instructors. I was invited to talk about um, how to teach math, right, in um, PTEC, which is the Pharmacy Technician Educators Council. And I told them, I always tell this to my students, do not let them multiply or divide, just stop, right? Why? There are many cases wherein technician, not only students, technicians themselves, or even pharmacists, multiply when they have to divide or divide when they have to multiply because they know it's like second nature to them already, right? But I've seen all these mistakes all the time. But you gotta remember, if the problem needs to be divided and you multiplied it, what can happen? This is an overdose, correct? But if you divided something that needs to be multiplied, can happen. This is an underdose. Don't think that oh, it's just an underdose. Do you know that your underdose is just as bad as your overdose? Yeah, especially when we're talking antibiotics. You're just tickling the bacteria. And then they come back stronger in a mutated form. That's why today we have super bugs now. Okay? So do not do this, please. Okay? So that you'll gear, you can guarantee yourselves and you have a peace of mind that you did the math, right? So let's stick to two ways, ratio and proportion or dimensional analysis. Who did dimensional analysis in high school? Chemistry, I believe so. Who did? Okay, that's okay. okay. That's why I always go back to ratio and proportion, but really, really, when we did pharmacy calculations back in pharmacy school, it's all dimensional analysis. And I have one professor, who's one of my favorite professors, who said, there's not a single problem in pharmacy that cannot be solved using ratio and proportion. This day, I've been a pharmacist 24 years, this for 26, 27 years. Not that I wanted to prove her wrong. <laughs> She's right. Yeah, you can go back to the good old ratio and proportion. So now many of the problems in um, during task or tests or when I lecture, I go back here. So the students who don't, who are not used to this or don't like this, still has this. Can you follow? Okay. Well, please do not multiply or divide when you are converting. That's one thing I will recommend. There's an extra step to validate this. Let's talk. I will not ask anybody what their weight is. Uh, never ask a woman of their weight. <laughs> That's true, they said. 125 pounds. Convert this to kilograms. I don't really weigh myself. So that was the last time I weighed. When I, when I start getting back pains, I just want to validate that it's because of the weight. But I don't. But there are people who weigh themselves every day. And I think that's a good thing. Until I feel pain, then I'm not. 125 pounds to kilograms. I'll do dimensional analysis first. How do you do that? Well, you go back to this, right? You're converting it to kilograms. So if you have, look at this. There's an invisible denominator here, correct? Yeah, so you want to put your pounds at the bottom so you can cancel this pound symbol, okay? And then put your conversion factor. A kilogram is 2.2 pounds. This extra step just told you to divide, right? 
it validated. Now you're not guessing. I don't like you guessing, multiplying or dividing. Why? You're putting a patient's life 50-50. Chances of survival 50-50. If the patient walk in your hospital or a pharmacy with a 90% chance of survival by you guessing, you just lowered it instead of making the person better. Okay? You can see just one extra step. You validate it if you have to divide. Okay. So what's the answer here? What is it? 56.8. Huh? Let's check. Shoot, that didn't click because I don't like dimensional analysis or I didn't learn this. Let's check ratio and proportion. Ratio and proportion, you can set it up this way. A kilogram is 2.2 pounds. But if you set it up ratio and proportion, take note, this has to be equals. That's where students flip flop and get it wrong. And then what do you do? This has to be kilograms and this has to be pounds because this is equals. Can you see that? It's not the same, okay? We're not canceling anything. We're trying to see the proportion, okay? Now plug in, what did I give you? My weight in pounds, 125 pounds. Now here is your X kilograms. Can you follow? Okay, a lot of you like ratio and proportion, so let's do it. This step again, just validated what you have to do. Because the next step is to cross multiply. So you're gonna get 125 by 2.2, correct? It just validated, you have to divide, not multiply. You see that? One extra step to not mess up a patient's prescription, for sure, okay? And what is the answer? It should be exactly the same as this. Yes, 56.8. I'm not gonna teach you the other four. It has something to do with the product of, of the extremes equal the product of the means. And you know that in ratio and proportion, you can set it up in colons and you can set it up in fractions, okay? Let's do one more, reverse. Give me a weight in kilograms. Stefan, do you still weigh yourself in kilograms? Yeah. So that you know? Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter, not necessarily yours. Just give me a number. 98 kilograms, okay? Let's convert this to pounds. Ratio and proportion first. Let's flip it this time, okay? A kilogram, this is how I set up my ratio and proportion, is to 2.2 pounds. Again, if it's ratio and proportion, it has to be equals. And this has to be kilograms, and this has to be pounds. See that? And then what's next? He gave you 98 kilograms. What's next? This is your X now, okay? Cross multiply. It just validated that you had to, or you have to multiply because you're going to have to divide it by one as, a, as the next step. What is the answer here? What's the answer? 215.55. You see how it may look like a woman? Okay, 215.6 pounds. Let's check dimensional mm -hmm. now. Stefan gave us 98 kilograms times, if it's dimensional analysis, what do you do at the bottom? Make sure the kilogram is down there because you want to cancel this right away. So this is one kilogram and this is 2.2. Pounds. You see the rule of fractions multiply all numerators before you proceed. It's just validated that you have to multiply. Yet again, one step. Was it worth that effort? Yeah. Because <clears throat> it means not overdosing them or not underdosing them. Just extra step. Who likes ratio proportion? Hands up. Who likes dimensional analysis? That's okay. It doesn't matter. Okay. I'm not going to call your parents and say, your daughter doesn't write. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm traumatized to this day. Your daughter doesn't solve the math the same way I solved the math. Well, was she getting the answer? Okay. As long as you don't look at your seat mates for your answer, we're good. Who did this at home? Centimeters to, uh, I'm on weight, right? Well, so I'm going to give you both. Any questions before I pass on the in class? Yes. Yeah. 
What's the rule for okay. rounding? Rule for rounding off. Okay. From this point forward, keep two decimal places and follow the rule of rounding off, meaning hundreds place. Where do you look? On the third one. If five and up, then you add one. Okay. So the only one that we keep one decimal place is your test paper or quizzes or worksheets. Don't have instruction. Follow my verbal order. Okay. The only one where we keep the tenth place or one decimal place is temperature. I'm checking whether you follow instructions. So on your first test on conversion, I will follow those rules, okay? One decimal place or 10th place, temperature. All the rest, two decimal places or hundreds place. If there are no specific instructions on the test, but if there is a specific instruction on the test, what happens? You follow the instruction on the test and forget about the else rules, okay? Because I want you to know that for the PTCE, whatever the instruction is, not my instruction, should be followed. Okay. In class. How many did the in class again? Hands up. Half again, almost half. That's fine. 10 minutes again. Let's do this. Oh, in class. Oh, homework. Can you give me half? Check, okay, before you start working on something, check that it's in class work because we're going to go over in class, okay, before you do homework. You've done in class at home, then you can jump to homework. Who wants absent? Oh, extras. Oh, in class extras because some of you are ready. How are your binders going? Are they full now? Are you on your second binder now? <laughs> I have a little bit of all my paper. But I keep everything in. Right. You guys forgot to tell the uh, freshmen to have a little notebook where they write the hint, hint, and wink, winks I talked about. You did? Did you mention that? I was in there. Yeah. But now I'm reviewing the top 1,000 questions and trying to incorporate those as well. This is probably my seventh editing and proofreading to make sure that I remember including that. Who's IV certified? Hands up. IV certified. Hands up, hands up. Okay, then you're done. No. Yeah, out no. outside of the seniors. Okay, who's done exit? Hands up. Done exit. Good job, guys. Juniors, I'm looking at people on my right. Oh, because they're updating the website. Log in, but they do have logins now. They can't go in. You can certify them. They're trying to make it more user friendly and more efficient. Here's another web page designer. Hunger. <laughs> <laughs> And my tummy is not wrong, I think you're wrong. Sometimes when you're talking to someone. <laughs> Excuse my tummy, please. Stick to this, huh? Follow the rules, especially on test. One more topic, hopefully we could.
Maybe not. Maybe I'll have to do that. Done? Oh, it in class? Oh. <laughs> Freshman, I highly recommend that you do what these students are doing. Like at the beginning, Gina didn't have it. Like, no, no, expectations like that. <laughs> Because it gets more difficult or more complicated as we move on. Especially week three. Week three topics, new to everyone. And then one of the, I forgot to mention on Blair Food last night, one of the uh, birthday boys baked something. Let me try it. it. Looks like a pie, but he said it's a cake. No. <laughs> I was hoping it was lumpia or pancit because it's in a, a rectangular foil, but he said it's a cake, so I think he baked it for you. <clears throat> we have two new students, actually three. One, he has medical issues from the time I interviewed. Ask him, I said, can you? Are you sure? I'm asking you physically able to. I'm not asking, well, I think you're very, very smart and can handle this, but medical condition. I don't know. They have, I don't think they Seven students? But there's. Students showing up on Trisha's roster that's not in class. Yeah. Okay, yes. There's one problem in there, but we're not there yet. It's grams to pounds. There's two conversions you can use. First, you convert your grams to kilograms, since we're learning kilograms. And what's the conversion for that? A kilogram is a thousand grams. And then follow ration proportion and dimensional analysis, and then convert it to pounds. But there's one straight conversion as well, which is commonly forgotten. It's in your sheet, pharmacy math sheet. Grams to pounds, straight conversion. What are the numbers, three numbers? Short. 